all right, all right, listen, listen. If you do real estate photography, you need to start doing this like right now. Stop, just watch this video and implement this in your setup. It's going to make your clients super happy. It could even add new business uh, to your real estate photography and, and really any photography, but specifically real estate photography. And it, it does also work very well for YouTube thumbnails and other sorts of things. But anyway, just, just keep watching this video. What's up guys, if you're new here, my name is Paul and I run a channel that inspires other creators that your future is whatever you make it. And I do that through gear reviews and tutorials. And today I got a crazy tutorial for you. So let's just put this in perspective. I do a lot of real estate photography and this is the first time I used this on my last client shoot. And I was like, mind blown. This, this is just, you need to start doing this right now, like I said. So here, let, I'm just gonna show you a few examples and then I'm gonna show you, we're gonna just edit one live and I'll show you kind of how I did it through the software. So if you're not familiar with Photoshop, uh, Generative Fill, um, they it's a brand new tool. Now, do you have to have Photoshop for this? At this moment, no, you can go to Adobe and get a Firefly, sign up for it for the beta, and you can do all this through a website. However, I do find it to be a little bit easier in Photoshop, and my guess is if you are doing real estate photography, you probably have a Lightroom and Photoshop account that you're already paying for. The trick for this one is you're gonna need the Photoshop beta version. But let me show you some examples of what I'm talking about with this generative fill and how you can use it for real estate. I got this photo right here. I mean, look, I took this photo, um, it's a level living room space and just, just kind of look at it, right? This is, you know, you got old pictures on the wall. My, you know, my wife is the real estate agent then, and she's like, I really don't want those. I want something more, a little bit more modern. So the, the pictures aren't as like old timey. Um, there's like a, a, a umbrella that she didn't really particularly like, but there was, she didn't have a lot of time to move a ton of things around. And obviously you're not going to be moving people's pictures off the wall. Uh, there's also like this, like, you know, entertainment center that I just could, the room wasn't big enough for me to get it out of the frame to have a clean shot frame with this and still get that front door in the shot. So, you know, those are things I was living with. Um, you know, there, if you look over at the refrigerator, there's like a ton of stuff all over it. The other room behind it, you can see like a little stool slightly in the frame, which actually wasn't a stool. It was like, like a set of congas and then like some photos on the wall. Now you see this picture and I'll show you what generative fill did for me right here in this picture. So <laughs> this is the exact same picture right here. However, what I did is obviously I replaced the photos with one wider photo that evenly fits over the couch. And um, I got rid of that umbrella, get rid of all the pictures on the wall in the background of that room and the little stand leg that you, you can't see now. The refrigerator has no more stuff on the side magnetized to it. And you know, there's like a calendar missing. And I even was able to remove that entertainment center that was in the bottom left corner. So it just cleaned up the image. And all that was done with generative AI fill. And I didn't really have to work on it too much. A lot of the stuff like removing that entertainment center, one click and it did it perfectly. Getting that pictures gone, it was literally like, just like drawing a box around all those pictures, generative fill, boom. And, and like I said, I'll show you all that later in the video, but I wanna show you a few more examples. This was uh, the porch and I did not think this was gonna be salvageable at all, but I just took it because you'll still need to see the porch, right? So, and then I threw it into Photoshop. I'm like, well, let's just see what it can do. I highly doubt it's gonna be able to get all this off the wall. And then sure enough, we go, to this. <laughs> I was completely amazed. I mean, the bikes are gone. It took, got, got rid of that chair that like the fold up chair that was sitting next to this patio set. The, the ceiling, you know, looks fine. Um, the floor looks pretty like realistic. You can't really tell there's a, it's a little bit of, of nuances, but I'd much rather have those little nuances than a bike on the wall. And I mean, look at the reflection now, it, even the reflection in the glass, it's gone. This tool is just absolutely incredible. Um, and to give you another example, um, I'm gonna show you some photos that I did for uh, my work. So uh, I do IT and um, we did it, they wanted a group photo, we had a big group training. And this is that photo right here. 
Um, but I couldn't get back further enough to get everybody into the shot and to not see these tables. And there wasn't really enough space for us anywhere else. I was like, well, I wonder what generative fill could do in this case. And bang, was I absolutely amazed. I mean, look, the reflection in the floor even like shows the correct people. And I, I just, I don't know how this software does such a great job. Uh, and it like AI'd people's feet in there. Now, some of the feet I had to kind of critique over through a little bit. It's just amazing how that works. And then just for, for giggles, I did another group of people and that's what it looked like. And then boom, once again, added all the reflections in the, f the floor. Like, I mean, I was amazed on how well this like generative AI work. Let's go into Photoshop now after you give showing you a few examples of what this software can actually do and see how you can use it, and implement it in the same fashion that I did. All right. So as you can see here, I am using the same exact photo that I showed you at the beginning uh, of the video. And I thought it was, you know, it, it just it's an easy way for me to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So once again, using Adobe Photoshop beta, um, the beta has the generative fill in it. Um, I have had no problems with the software whatsoever. So anyway, you open up your image and you, and just, you literally just take the little lasso tool and start highlighting things. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it'll do its thing. Um, and then you just hit this generative fill button down here. And then if you want to replace it with something specific, you could say like, uh, you know, landscape photo or something like that. And you can press the generate button and it's going to take a little bit of time and it'll replace that particular photo with like another landscape photo. And that's not really a landscape photo, but we can, we can keep going through that. And none of those are really landscape photos. So you could, change out your words and, and replace it with stuff. Anyway, so I wanted to show you that, but if you wanted to just completely get rid of all these photos, you literally just, I just circle everything here and generative fill. And then I hit generate. I just, you just, if you want to remove things, just leave it blank. And when you do that, it'll realize that you probably just want the whole area to be cleaned up. And it will give you different variations of that when you generate this. So see, notice that it hasn't happened to me before. It's still left like one little piece here. Now you can circle, cycle through these. Oh, see there, it replaced it with one photo, but it did have one where it completely removed it. And that's the one we're going to keep for now. We can go over to this umbrella, like I said, and you know, you want to try to kind of get it as close as you can, but you, you don't have to be completely perfect. And then I'm just going to hit generative fill. And once again, leave it blank and hit generate. The crazy thing is that you're going to see that it's going to fill in these baseboards. Like there, look, there's no baseboards there. Um, before you couldn't really see it very well, but it's smart enough to know it added the baseboards in where it looks like the rest of the baseboards in the house. I don't know. AI complete magic. There's this other thing in here that I was going to remove. Now I want to kind of move this entertainment center. Now see, it kind of starts on the edge here. So I'm going to start at the top, work my way down and then lasso around this and then just go all the way up with that. And I'm going to once again, hit generative fill and generate. I don't want to replace with anything. I just want it to remove that thing out of the photo. And this is the kind of stuff that just mind blows me and makes this job so much easier. The things you can do with this software is you could have an empty room and put in a couch. Now the tricky part about this is right now there's not really a way to tell Photoshop, I want that exact same couch in the next photo that I edit. For instance, on that photo I showed you, where we'll just go ahead and try to do it now. I just, I drew a square in above the couch. I put generative fill and I put, uh, oh, I think I put rectangle landscape frame and I generated it and let's end like 
it's, it's crazy. It's, cra- it's crazy what this thing can come up with. But the hard part about it is, so what I did is I had to like copy that frame, paste it in as a layer on another photo and then warp the perspective of it to kind of get it to match. I had to do some work on that part, but at least for the initial, it worked out fine. And if you don't care if it's the same photo or same exact like things in the walls and then the and various angles of the room, you're fine. So like this one, it didn't do one solid photo, but I can just hit generate again. If I didn't like any of the choices, you know what? Let's go with, I maybe I knew, I can't remember what I did. Did I do landscape frame? Landscape frame. Okay. So we got at least photos still not like a rectangle your ones, but you know that this is okay. So this is kind of like that, but it's not a frame, but so I like, I like these photos the best. It, it, is it's a little more modern and it keeps that. So we're going to keep, move, keep that and move on this little chair over here. How I got rid of this is I just drew a little bit around there, generative fill generate, and it did a very good job of actually removing it. But, and there we go. Boom. It's gone. So it does take a little bit of tweaking at times. And I like this, this, we're going to clean this fridge up here. I don't remember exactly how I did this before, but something along those lines. And we'll see what it comes up with. I, I think I had to do a few different uh, circles. Right? I don't think I did them all at the same time, but, you know, we'll see. And no, it doesn't. So, but, you know, it, that's also a little bit cleaner. I would much rather prefer that. But you can even, like I said, I can keep going back and forth with that and, get, and getting it to remove doing smaller chunks for now. We're going to leave it. We'll take this uh, calendar here and we're going to remove it, but I hope you kind of get the gist. This is how easy it really is and how powerful this tool is. And that's all I did with the bikes when I, on the other photo of the bikes. I just literally circled all the bikes, hit generative fill. I might've had to do a few different variations of it. Um, boom, boom. Okay. So that one looked the most normal. And then we're going to test take this. And I, t I think I took this out too. Didn't want that in there. The thing about this is you look at the floor, the tile and everything like that. It's, it's all like looking normal. Now look at this. We got a, another image like this. Is, it's crazy. Well, I can even circle this. I, I didn't do this, I think, but I think I was going to generative fill. It's just, this one's gonna be a little bit harder because that light is kind of hitting on it. And maybe I tried to remove the the octopus before and it was the light was giving me a hard time here. I don't remember. Let's see what it does. But you can remove something that's smaller and you know, not as crazy. Um like an octopus or something like that. But uh, you know, and you, you can even do things now. I didn't try this. Let's let, I didn't, this lamp didn't bother me too much, but what you could do is highlight the lamp and say generative fill and say you didn't like the lamp for whatever reason, just put lamp and you can generate and it'll generate a new lamp and put it in its place in the parameters of the area that you kind of selected. And this is what's kind of crazy too. And there you go. So say you didn't like the old fashioned lamp and you wanted a little bit more modern one, you can just replace that there. And it did a very good job. Let's see what other kind of lamps they had. Okay. So you got a number of different lamps to choose from to make your image more modern and less like old fashioned. -y. This just looks fantastic. And I could give this to a client and be happy with that with the exception of like this little string that's hanging down there. The, 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 this tool just blows my mind, like completely blows my mind on how good and how the things it can actually remove from a photo, things you can like place in its place. We can take a, a room and really clean it up and make it look more clean and organized for your clients. So say they forget to move something. I don't really care. Dude, I start now I, when I take my drone shots outside, I'm not even worried about if I'm standing in the yard as long as I'm kind of standing around a green area of grass. I, I try to make it so it's not super hard on it, but I'll literally remove me 
from the, from the grass. I'll remove my car from sitting, sitting in front of the house. There are shots where a car shows through the blinds and I just highlight the blind, all the car with the blinds area and hit generative fill. And usually it'll remove objects and just make it look like they are, there's nothing out there through the window. It is crazy. Like how much stuff you can do with this for real estate. If you're not using this right now for real estate, you really need to consider using it. Get that Photoshop beta, start testing it on just photos, getting to see how it's, it's quirks and kind of how you can implement it. And it'll change the way you do real estate photos or really any photography, specifically for real estate uh, when you're dealing with like cleaning up houses where people leave huge. They're like, I, I want to remove this from the room, but it's too heavy and big and I can't move it. Well, generative fill can do that for you, can clean up furniture, can move things around and can even do all the virtual staging for you. So it could even add more business to your, to your real estate photography. Start implementing it now. This is a great tool. I hope you like this video. If you want to see more videos like this one, let me know down in the comments below. Like, subscribe, do all the fun YouTube -y things, and I'll see you in the future.